మాన్యశ్రీ శాసన మండలి అధ్యక్షులు మాన్యశ్రీ శాసనసభ సభాపతి గారు మాన్యశ్రీ ముఖ్యమంత్రి గారు గౌరణీయ శాసన మండలి సభ్యులు శాసనసభ సభ్యులు అందరికీ నా వందనములు రెండు వేలు పదిహేడు పదిహెట్టు బడ్జెట్ సమావేశాల సందర్భంగా నవ తెలంగాణ శాసనసభ సంయుక్త సమయ సమావేశాలను ఉద్దేశించి ప్రసంగించడం నాకు సంతోషంగా ఉంది శాసన మండలి మరియు శాసనసభ సమావేశాలలో జరగబోయే చర్చలు అర్థవంతంగా తెలంగాణ ప్రజల ఆకాంక్షల మేరకు ప్రజల నమ్మకాన్ని నిలబెట్టే కొన్నేలా ఉంటాయని ఆశిస్తున్నాను ఈ సభలో జరిగే చర్చలు తెలంగాణ రాష్ట్ర ఏర్పాటుకు ప్రజలు చేసిన త్యాగాలను ప్రతిబింబించేలా ఉంటాయని ఆశిస్తున్నాను తెలంగాణ ది యంగెస్ట్ స్టేట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా అండ్ ద మోస్ట్ హ్యాపనింగ్ స్టేట్ హెస్ ఎంబార్క్ అపాన్ మెన్యూ ఇన్నోవేటివ్ స్టెప్స్ టు గివ్ ది మచ్ నీడెడ్ బూస్ట్ టు ద స్టేట్ ఇకానమీ ద ఇన్ఫెంట్ స్టేట్ has come to be recognized throughout the country for launching many an initiative in a very short span of time the results of many initiatives taken by my government in the last 33 months in various sectors is there for all of you to see uninterrupted power supply revamping of minor irrigation tanks through mission kakathiya drinking water supply to households through mission bhagiratha and obtaining the number one rank in the ease of doing business or a few among the many in a move aimed at launching people friendly administrative reforms my government carved out 21 new districts on the auspicious dashara day last year increasing the total number of districts to 31 in addition to the new districts 25 new revenue divisions 125 new mandals 5 new police commissariates 23 new police subdivisions 28 circle officers and 94 new police stations have also been created as part of this exercise this is aimed at taking the administration and governance to every doorstep and to improve the delivery systems so as to ensure that the benefits of development and welfare schemes reach the last person in the state it is heartening to note that under know your district plan your district concept many district specific developmental strategies have been initiated through micro level planning by the district administration it gives me immense pleasure to note that there has been a significant improvement in the growth of gross state domestic product gsdp since the formation of the new state as per the advance estimates of 2016-17 the gsdp is likely to grow at an impressive rate of 13.7% at current prices compared to the estimated all india growth rate of 11.5% at constant prices of 2011-12 this corresponds to 10.1% growth as against the projected national growth rate of 7.1% as per the advance estimates telangana's gross state domestic product is estimated to be 6.54 lakh crore in 2016-17 at current prices the primary sector that includes agriculture and allied activities is likely to register an impressive growth of 17.2% due to the good monsoon and proactive measures taken by my government to revamp the rural economy this is significantly higher than the all india growth rate of 9% for this sector the secondary sector that includes industries and manufacturing is likely to grow at 9.8% which is higher than of all india 8.7% the service sector is likely to grow at 14.6% as compared to the all india growth of 11.9% in energy sector the state formation heralded a new dawn ending years of neglect of this sector the most significant achievement over the last 33 months on this front has been to end the power cuts 
and to ensure uninterrupted power supply. The people of Telangana have finally realized their dream of this 24 by 7 power supply to reap consequential benefits. This was the first challenge which the state government had to face after the formation of the new state. The farmers of Telangana are heavily dependent on agricultural pump sets that require power. In the past, hardly four to five hours of power could be supplied for agriculture. That too with problems of low voltage resulting in burning of transformers that affected timely supply of water to the crops. The farmers of Telangana suffered untold misery due to this. Even the industrial sector had to deal with power holidays twice a week and the domestic and commercial sector had to suffer power cuts of more than four to eight hours duration. Within six months of the state formation, the well-planned, coordinated and concerted steps taken by my government helped us tide over the crisis. Power cuts are now a thing of the past. Today, my government is ensuring supply of nine hours quality power during daytime for the farming community. This has resulted in significant increase in the agricultural output during the current Rabi, Yana Yasangi season. The market yards are brimming with the produce of the farmers. Our aim is to replace power holidays with the concept of power every day and at any time by making the state power surplus. This has also given a fillip to the industrial sector by instilling confidence on reliable power supply among the investors and the MSME sector in breathing a great sigh of relief. Commercial establishments and other sectors dependent on power are also stabilizing their activities. Last month, although the demand for power reached a peak level of 9,000 megawatts, my government through the power utilities ensured uninterrupted power supply. They truly deserve to be complemented. During this ensuing summer season, although the demand for power is expected to reach 9,500 to 10,000 megawatts, the agency's concern are readying to ensure uninterrupted supply without any break. With significant progress in power sector, my government is striving to usher in a new era of progress and prosperity in the state. This has generated a new spirit of optimism and enthusiasm all over the state. My government has embarked upon a long-term action to augment power generation in the state. While the installed generation capacity at the time of state formation was 6,574 megawatts, in the last two and a half years, my government has created an additional generation capacity of 4,190 megawatts. By the end of the current year, further generation capacity of 4,130 megawatts will be added. By the end of the next three years, the total availability of power shall be 16,306 megawatts. This includes 800 megawatts from Paloncha, KTPS, 1,000 megawatts from Chhattisgarh, 1,080 megawatts from Badradri power plant, 4,000 megawatts from NTPC, 800 from Singareni, 400 megawatts from Yadadri power station, 809 megawatts from CGS, apart from 3,727 megawatts from solar, 90 megawatts from hydro projects. In addition, Vada Dichpali transmission line has now been completed, through which the state can tap 2,000 megawatts from the northern grid from anywhere in the country as and when required by the state. My government, through these innovative measures of power management and augmentation of capacity, has successfully transformed the state from a power deficit into a power surplus state. Notwithstanding Telangana being the youngest state, it has secured the number one rank in ease of doing business. My government has unveiled the TSI Pass Act, the most investor-friendly industrial policy with a statutory backing, conferring the right to clearance within 15 days through an innovative system popularly known as single window without grills. This has paved the way for industrial growth of the state. Self-certification of the entrepreneurs is allowed where clearance is delayed, thereby ending the license raj of the past. A leading manufacturer of mobile phones recently conveyed its pleasant surprise and appreciation to my government on the seamless system of clearances in the state without any scope for corruption or delay. This bears ample testimony to the transparent, simple, and graft-free system of industrial clearances ensured by my government. As a result, the state is witnessing an unprecedented flow of investments totaling to over rupees 54,000 crore through 3,451 units with an employment generation potential of 2.20 lakhs persons. 
the service sector has become the main growth engine of the state economy in recent decades. There has been a spurt in the number of IT, ITES units in the state due to industry-friendly policies and world-class infrastructure. The state contributes about 12% of the share in the country's IT exports and Hyderabad ranks second in terms of total revenue from IT sector in the country. The value of IT exports in 2015-16 from the state was Rs 75,070 crore. This sector provides direct employment to over 4 lakh persons. My government has announced ICT policy framework, electronics policy, image policy for animation and gaming industry, innovation policy, rural technology policy, data centers policy, open data policy, cyber security policy, and data analytics policy. These policies will consolidate our preeminence in this, this sector. After achieving phenomenal success in the establishment of T-Hub, my government has embarked on a plan to develop phase two of the T-Hub with a total built-up space of 3.5 lakh square feet. This will provide incubation space for 4,000 IT entrepreneurs. As Dr. Ambedkar has said, political democracy cannot last unless there lies at the base of it a social democracy. In order to achieve inclusive social justice, the poor and the backward remain the focus of my government. My government is committed to provide social security to destitute and helpless persons. True meaning of development is not only economic prosperity and technological advancement, but more importantly, inclusive growth that can be achieved by ensuring support and social security to the downtrodden. My government firmly believes the real development is possible only when the fruits of progress reach the poorest family in the remotest hamlet and to ensure this, several welfare initiatives have been launched with a human touch. My government has earmarked lion's share of the budget for the welfare sector by allocating over rupees 35,000 crore to implement over 30 welfare schemes. I am happy to state that today Telangana is considered the leading state in implementation of welfare measures. Contrary to the ritualistic practice of doling out paltry assistance through social welfare pensions, my government has significantly enhanced the quantum of pensions for old persons, widows, weavers, and toddy tappers, AIDS patients, and increased it to rupees 1,000 per month under the ASARA scheme. The pensions for differently abled and aged artists has been enhanced to rupees 1,500 per month. Many poor women in the state eke out their livelihood by BD rolling without proper remuneration. remuneration. To elevate their pride, my government, for the first time, introduced a financial assistance scheme of rupees 1,000 per month for the BD workers. Telangana is the only state in the country that can boast of such a scheme for BD workers. While 29 lakh persons were sanctioned social security pensions before the formation of the state, currently, as many as 36 lakh persons are benefiting under the pension and assistance schemes introduced by my government. As compared to the annual expenditure of Rs. 835 crore towards this in the past, currently my government is spending over Rs. 4,729 crore for this purpose. My government has taken yet another humanitarian decision to mitigate the plight of single women by introducing an assistance of Rs. 1,000 per month to enable them to live with dignity. My government is determined to ensure that no one suffers from the pangs of hunger and to eliminate any starvation deaths in the state. The food security scheme has been significantly strengthened to serve this need. The government introduced a scheme of supplying sanna BM to the welfare hostels and also under midday meal scheme in the schools, which resulted in significant increase in the attendance of the students. For this purpose, 1.44 lakh tons of fine rice is utilized at the cost of 496.61 crore per year. My government is providing financial assistance of Rs 51,000 to poor unmarried girls through Kalyana Lakshmi and Shadi Mubarak scheme. As a result, the number of child marriages has come down drastically in the recent years. So far, 1.74 lakh brides were benefited under this scheme. My government has launched overseas scholarship scheme by providing financial assistance to economically poor students for pursuing higher studies abroad. Rupees 20 lakh financial assistance is being provided to SCST students under the B.R. Ambedkar Overseas Scholarship Scheme, for BC students under the Mahatma Jyotiba Phule BC Overseas Scholarship Scheme, and for students of minority community under the CM Overseas Scholarship Scheme. 
my government is committed to provide assistance to the families of martyrs who sacrifice their lives to achieve separate statehood. Apart from financial assistance of rupees 10 lakh to each family, government employment is being provided to one member of such, each such family. My government abolished transport tax on agricultural tractors and autos. Accident insurance scheme covers of rupees 5 lakh was provided to drivers, construction workers, journalists, home guards, toddy tappers, and fishermen. For the first time in the country, a welfare fund of rupees 50 crore for journalists and rupees 100 crores for advocates has been created by my government to alleviate the plight of poor Brahmin families. Brahmin Samkshemak Parishad has been set up with an allocation of rupees 100 crore. My government is committed to the welfare of retired army personnel, extending double pension scheme to them and their widows, substantial increase of cash awards to the gallantry awardees, strengthening signing welfare boards, both at the state and district levels are some of the measures in this regard. After the formation of the state, my government undertook several employee-friendly measures, including sanction of special Telangana increment, 43% fitment and health cards for employees. Remuneration to outsourced and contract employees has been increased much above the scale prescribed under the Minimum Wages Act. Remuneration to contract teachers working in residential schools has been increased and the human touch of my government was once again reflected in the decision to enhance the remuneration for village revenue assistance from Rs. 6,500 to Rs. 10,500, apart from the Telangana increment of Rs. 200. Recognizing the services rendered by the Anganwadi teachers and helpers, my government enhanced their wages from Rs. 4,200 to Rs. 10,500 for Anganwadi teachers and from Rs. 2,200 to Rs. 6,000 for helpers. My government is committed to fill up one lakh vacancies in the government sector in a period of five years. As I showed at the time of state formation, as a part of this commitment, so far, recruitment of 5,936 posts has been completed through the Telangana State Public Service Commission. In addition, 2,681 posts were filled up in the power sector and 4,500 in Singareni collieries. Further, 3,950 persons were recruited in RTC and 10,422 posts were filled up in police department. With this, the total recruitment after... ...contract employees and 24,000 outsourced employees in the power sector. Further, 24,000 posts are likely to be sanctioned for the newly established residential schools, of which 8,000 posts will be filled up this year and the remaining 16,000 in the next two years. Further, large-scale recruitment of teachers is planned by the government. The dependent employees of Singerani collieries are being provided with employment. By filling up all these posts through a time-bound action plan, my government aims to fulfill its assurance of providing recruitment opportunities for one lakh persons. The agriculture sector in the state is poised for revival, ending the agrarian distress that marked the past. My government has embarked on an ambitious plan for holistic development of agriculture sector, dovetailing it with irrigation projects and revival of tanks. At a, as an immediate measure of relief, my government has already waived agricultural loans amounting to rupees 17,000 crore and three installments of rupees 12,105 crores were adjusted into the accounts of 35.30 lakh farmers. As per my government's assurance, the amount required for the last installment will be allocated in the ensuing budget. To address the credit needs of farmers, rupees 29,101 crore was earmarked for crops under the annual credit plan for 2016-17, which is significantly higher compared to the last year. To popularize micro-irrigation, subsidy has been extended up to 5 hectares to all categories of farmers, relaxing the earlier limit of rupees 1 lakh per family and coverage of 1 hectare. Today, maximum subsidy of rupees 6.25 lakh is allowed per farmer for micro-irrigation. My government has encouraged polyhouse cultivation of vegetables and flowers by providing 95% subsidy to SCST farmers and 75% to other farmers. An area of 1,005 acres is covered under this so far. 
realizing that there is a huge shortage of agricultural storage facilities in the stage, my government has taken up construction of go-downs with an additional storage capacity of 17,057 lakh metric tons at 330 locations with the assistance of NABAR. So far, 138 go-downs have been completed. In order to ensure drought-proofing of agriculture sector, my government has taken up the ambitious task of providing and stabilizing irrigation facilities to 1 crore acres as one of its main flagship programs spread throughout the state with the ultimate objective of ensuring 1 lakh acres of irrigation in each of the rural constituencies. Only then it is expected that the prevailing drought conditions and distress in the agriculture sector would be mitigated on a permanent basis and rural economy would be revamped. Towards this objective, 23 major and 13 medium irrigation projects which have been ongoing since many years have been fast-tracked, duly resolving many issues and bottlenecks in their execution. So far, seven projects have been completed and 14 projects are partially commissioned. Out of the total contemplated new irrigation potential of 68.19 lakh acres and stabilization of 8.44 lakh acres through these projects, new irrigation potential of 12.29 lakh acres and stabilization of IACAT of 2 lakh acres has been achieved. Bhakta Ramadasu Lift Irrigation Scheme that was launched on 31st January 2017 is designed to irrigate about 58,958 acres and the project was completed in a record time of 11 months. This paves the way for bumper harvest in the future in the hitherto parched lands. Under the flagship program of Mission Kakatiya, my government has taken steps to rejuvenate and restore 46,531 tanks to revive the ecosystem in the rural areas. This has become a role model for the entire country. So far, restoration of 17,278 tanks has been taken up under phase one and two of this scheme. My government has taken the prestigious Telangana Coop Harita Haram program to increase green cover up to 33% in our state. We have fixed the target of planting 230 crore samplings all over the state of which 100 crore saplings are being planted along roadways, open places, on the banks of tanks, embankments of, on, of agricultural lands, private and public office premises, colonies and in private houses in the cities, towns and villages. Another 120 crore saplings will be planted in the forest areas to restore forest land which was lost due to deforestation. Under GHMC limits, 10 crore saplings will be planted. The program, which was launched on July 3, 2015, has planted 15.86 crore samplings in the first year and 40 crore sam saplings in the second year. Efforts are on to plant 46 crore saplings this year. Program is on to plant an average of 40,000 samplings on, a, on, on, on per village, which will be 40 lakh samplings every, in every assembly constituency. To protect and safeguard the toddy trade, a program is on to plant 5 crore toddy palm saplings along tank embankments. Last year, 50 lakh toddy palm samplings were planted. 4,000 nurseries were set up in the state to make available the saplings wherever there is a need. On an average, one nursery was set up for every two villages. Society should come forward to unveil green Telangana. Road development has been taken up as a specific policy. This coupled with maintenance will remove the hardship faced by the people in the past and improve their mobility. After formation of the state, my government has formulated a comprehensive road development policy framework suiting geographical needs of the state. As per the present policy, each village is connected with Mandal headquarters with a Pakka road. Mandal to district headquarters is a double lane road and district headquarters to the state capital with a four lane road. In 14,689 kilometer length of roads was upgraded to BT roads under the Panchayat Raj department with an expenditure of rupees 2,247.28 crore. Further, 8,987 kilometer length of road are being widened and 46 bridges are being built with an expenditure of rupees 891 crore. Under the roads and buildings department, 5,150 kilometer length of road is being upgraded with an investment of rupees 1,550 crore and 512 bridges are being built by spending rupees 2,782 crore. So far, 2,850 kilometer length of road has been widened with an expenditure of rupees 4,100 crore. My government has achieved remarkable success in securing adequate funds for the construction of new national highways in the state. 
the state has secured 2,872 kilometer national highways in the last two and a half years as against 2,527 kilometer length of national highway laid in Telangana over the last seven years, seven decades. As a result, the total national highway road length will increase to 5,399 kilometers, resulting in an increase in average national highway road length in the state to 4.7 kilometers as against a national average of 3.81 kilometers. My government is committed to complete the ambitious project of Mission Bhagiratha to provide safe drinking water to every household in the state by the end of 2017. This gigantic project has been segregated into 26 segments and takes into account the water needs of the entire population for the next three decades. The prestigious scheme was inaugurated by the Honorable Prime Minister in Komati Banda village in Gajwel constituency in August last year. This flagship program has received encomiums from Niti Aayog, Hatko and several states. My government is determined to revamp the entire education system in the state. For this purpose, KG to PG free education system has been initiated. As a part of this, 103 residential education institutions are being established for SCs and 51 residential schools for STs. Out of the 201 residential schools sanctioned for minorities, 71 have already started functioning. Residential schools will be established for backward class in each of the 119 assembly constituencies from the next academic year. For the first time, my government has sanctioned 30 residential degree colleges for SC women, of which 23 residential degree colleges have already commenced. Public safety and security are the topmost priorities of my government. Providing safety and security has a multiplier effect in terms of attracting investments. As a part of its efforts to control crime, Telangana Police State Police is constantly upgrading its skills. Latest technologies are being extensively used in smart policing. Efforts are underway to establish a modern technology-based command and control center to ensure safety and security of the public. She teams have been deployed and are active against Eve teasers to curb harassment of women. My government has acquired the much needed land for establishment of commando training center for octopus, which is specialized in anti-terrorist mission. My government is implementing a two-pronged strategy for eradication of illicit distillation in the state. Apart from the prevention of manufacturing and sale of illicit liquor, an alternative employment is also being provided to all those involved in the activity. The steps taken by my government in this regard are yielding good results. Over 4,000 modern vehicles were procured for the police force and 3,896 posts were sanctioned for four new India Reserve Battalions. Considering the growing needs for fine fire safety, 100 motorcycles with missed equipment were provided at a cost of rupees 6.42 crore for the fire stations. <coughs> this will enable easy maneuverability in the narrow lanes. Six new fire stations were also sanctioned during the current year. As Gandhiji said, India lives in villages, rural communities of the state based on traditional occupation had to undergo severe trials and tribulations in the past resulting in distress migration to urban areas. My government believes that future of our state will depend on how we transform our villages towards social and economic progress. My government has launched concerted steps for revamping the rural economy. The life of the rural people will be changed by providing irrigation facilities and in turn it will revive the whole ecosystem. For example, in Mahabub Nagar district alone, on completion of ongoing projects, irrigation potential of 4.50 lakh acres shall be created, which will increase to 8.50 lakh acres by next year. The fallow lands brought under cultivation through canal and renovated tanks has created hitherto unseen greenery in this past area. The migrant laborers who had given up farming are now returning to their native villages. In addition to the agriculture crops, a conducive atmosphere is being created for fish cultivation and animal husbandry. To revive the rural economy, it is important to give new thrust to the community-based traditional occupations. To achieve this objective, my government has prepared a blueprint to revamp the activities of shepherds, fishermen, weavers, barbers, and other artisans. As a result of the restoration of tanks and execution of irrigation projects, the fishery sector in the state is poised for a big boost. Fishery sector is recognized as a growth engine of the economy as it generates income and employment to fishermen community. Toward this end, my government has applied 27.22 crore fish seed free of cost for stocking 3,901 reservoirs and tanks this year. This is expected to yield 81,650 tons of fish with a value of 408.25 crore. 
Steps are being taken to improve marketing outlets for fishermen by construction of 100 retail fish markets at different locations. On similar lines, a major boost will be given to sheep rearing to improve the lot of the communities involved and to revive the rural economy of the state. To revive the textile and garment industry and to improve the lot of weavers in the state, my government proposes to establish mega textile parks at Warangal, Sirsila and Mahabub Nagar by providing common infrastructure facilities such as affluent treatment plan, R&D centers and capacity building support through skill development along with added incentives. My government is making all efforts to explore domestic and international markets to revive the glorious tradition of handloom in the state pertaining to the weavers clusters in Gadwal, Narayanpet, Pochampalli, etc. A commission is also constituted to look into the problems and social status of backward classes. My government is preparing a comprehensive plan for development of most backward classes to alleviate their sufferings. A separate corporation is established to uplift these classes into the social mainstream through financial assistance. <coughs> My government is committed for the welfare of scheduled cars and scheduled tribes. Due to the modified guidelines stipulated by the Government of India for the preparation of budget from this year onwards, although the classification of plan and non-plan will cease to exist, my government is committed to introduce suitable legislative mechanism for adequate statutory earmarking of funds for SCs and STs under the new dispensation. Necessary steps will be taken to ensure this in the current session of the legislature. My government has been implementing several programs for the welfare and development of minorities such as pre-metric and post-metric scholarships, fee reimbursement and overseas scholarships for pursuing higher education abroad. A commission of inquiry was constituted to study the social, educational and economic conditions of Muslims. The commission has submitted its recommendations for policy initiatives as well as reservation for Muslims. Telangana is one of the states with about 40% population living in the urban areas. My government is taking concerted steps to develop Hyderabad as a global city. The first phase of Hyderabad Metro Rail project is expected to be completed this year. I am happy to note that Hyderabad has been ranked as the fifth most dynamic city of the, of the world as per the JIL City Momentum Index 2017. My government is providing special fund of rupees 300 crore to develop infrastructure in Warangal, which is the second largest city in the state. Similarly, other municipal corporations are also being provided rupees 100 crore each for development. Other urban board, local bodies are also being supported with ample funds. My government is committed to upgrade basic services such as water supply, sewerage, transport and build amenities in the urban areas of the state which will improve the quality of life for all, especially the poor and the disadvantaged. In this direction, my government is developing 12 urban centers in the state with central assistance under the Amrit scheme, namely Hyderabad, Warangal, Kammam, Karimnagar, Ramagundam, Nizamabad, Mahbub Nagar, Miryal Guda, Surya Pet, Nalgonda, Adila Pet, and Siddhi Pet. My government has identified 14 thrust areas with high growth potentials such as life sciences, IT hardware, precision engineering, food processing, polymers, capital goods, green technologies, solar energy. My government has taken initiatives to promote both the domestic and international investment in these sectors by creating an enabling business environment. Godavari Pushkaralu were conducted successfully in the state in 2015. With the same favor, Krishna Pushkaralu were conducted successfully in 2016 at 90 guards in the state. Nearly 3.5 crore devotees took the holy dip in Krishna. Tourism has huge potential for employment generation and economic growth. Recognizing the importance of tourism in Telangana, my government has embarked on various initiatives to build tourism infrastructure in the state. It is proposed to develop four new tourism circuits under Swadesh Darshan scheme, namely ecotourism circuit in Nagar Karnul district, tribal and ecotourism circuit covering Adilabad, Nirmal and Kumaram, Kumaram Beam, uh, Kumaram Beam Asifabad districts, Medaram, tribal circuit in Jayashankar, Bhopalpalli district and Hyderabad heritage circuit to showcase the tourist destinations in the state. To promote pilgrimage tourism in the state, my government is taking steps to develop Yadadri, Vemulavada, Jogulamba, Badradi, Dharmapuri, Basra and other major temples by upgrading the infrastructure. While addressing the joint session of the legislature in 2014, I showed that my government would provide trans transparent governance without any scope for political corruption. True to its commitment, my government has been providing corruption-free administration during the last two and a half years. I firmly believe that this tradition of my government <coughs> will enhance the faith of the people in the democratic system and values. Our legislature reflects the supreme will of the people. 
democratic temper calls for meaningful debate and discussions on important issues to resolve the problems of the people. As the Rig Veda says, Ano Badra Kratvo Yantu Vishwataha, which means let noble thoughts come from all directions. That should be the spirit behind the debates in this sacred temple of democracy. <coughs> being an august member of this house, as well as important, being a member of this august institution bestows great honor as well as important responsibilities. My government will constantly strive for smooth and constructive support, smooth and constructive conduct of legislative business. Sabalu Charchalu Manchi Vata Ronlo, Sfuti Daikanga, Undela, Sabha Nirvahanaku, Sabbelu Andaru, Sahakarin Chalani, Akor Turnanu, Telangana Rashtani, Abivridi Pantalo, Patamlo, Nadi Pinchandaniki, Bangaru Telangana Nirmananiki, Andaram Kalisi Sikatawa, Krishi Chayalani, Kor Tunanu, Chivariga, Andariki Superchetmina, Veda Slokato Muristanu, Loka Samasta Sukhino Bavantu, Jai Hind. Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Uttara Vanga Vindhya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Uchala Jala Dhitaranga Tava Shubha Name Jage Tava Shubha Aashish Mange Gahe Tava Jaya Gaga Janagana Mangala Dayak Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He